Good morning, and welcome to One Lonely Farmer. The little guy right there. He prefers case tractors for some reason over the John Deere ones lately. Drives Teresa nuts, but there he goes into the bedroom. Anyway, yeah, so enjoy this video, and we'll get to the comments at the end. It's been fun so far. I've just been really, really busy. Don't worry, I'm still alive. I have not contracted the Wuhan virus. Sometimes I wonder, who the hell I work with? I'm sorry. Laurel Hardy and, I don't know. Anyway. The so, uh, we should probably explain this. I don't like the number 13. It's my ex-wife's favorite number, right? What number is it? 13. Your mother's Wait, favorite you number. Unlucky number? Your mother's favorite number is 13. Go home and ask your mother tonight what her favorite number is. So, the length of this buggy was 13. So I told Cody, we're not making it 13. So I don't know how many inches you made it. Do you remember? I think I made it 14. He made it 14 inch, 14 feet long. 14 feet long. Oh, as you can tell, it is shiny Alabama blue. OLF2. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yep, story of the of my life lately is putting fertilizer down when I can. Uh, we got some kind of shitty ass weather. And yeah. Spring is kind of late. Wife over there. What are you doing? She's trying to butcher another song. This is what I'm gonna do. Am I gonna do it? I am gonna do it. Watch like this one. Are you, are you video anything? Yes, I am. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little bit of a public service amount, um, announcement. Public service announcement from an uh, from an essential essential person. I am essential agriculture essential person uh, to uh, non-essential people who have, are sitting at home in their house and are like, I hate it here, I wanna go out and do things. Here's the PSA. You know, you get up every day and you go to a job, and I understand you wanna work, and I don't know the feeling of not working because I'm essential. I'm not an actor, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a non-essential, I guess. I don't know whatever else word you want to call it. But, you get up, you go to work, and you spend your entire, what, people. You work, you get a paycheck, and what do you do with your money? You buy a house. You furnish it with all the best things, all the things you love to make your home a place, a sanctuary, a place where you can just be you, sit around in your underwear all day long, and nobody cares but, but you because you worked so hard for it. Why is it so terrible to be in a place, your home, that you work so hard for, why is it so terrible? All the best of the best is in there. You got all the entertainment you could possibly need or want right there at your fingertips. Everybody pretty much now has a uh, smart television, you know, smart TVs where you can get Netflix and Hulu and, and the internet and whatever else you want to do. Um, you know, isn't that neat how that works? But yet, you're out clogging the roads and complaining that an essential person who actually is feeding your fat ass is trying to work. How many cars did we just wait for out on Route 12? Too many, I lost count. At least 30 cars each direction. At least. In the matter of, and, and there was more coming. Uh, there was more coming. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. So. Those people obviously either live in a shithole that they can't stand to be in, or they're just unsatisfied with everything in their life that they have. Either Chuck house. Schumer or Nancy Pelosi. Nancy you can, Pelosi, I'll You're take Nancy? Her. Oh yeah, no, I'll you'll take her. her. Ew. Ew. I wouldn't touch her with, Give me your with Tim's dick and Joe pushing. Stop. Okay, there you go. Right there. Right Throw there. it right there. Will you stop? Open it like a ass at backwards Asian. What do you want from me? Oh, this is a weird one. Just light it and chuck it. Throw it. Throw it. 
You suck at lighting shit up. You told me to throw it. Okay. Get ready to do the fire dance. Fire dance. Why are we doing the fire dance? You're probably wondering why we're doing this. You know why we're doing this? I know why we're doing this. So why should we do this? So we can get my asparagus. That's right. There's a wild asparagus patch that grows here. Right? Yes. So we're burning the... Are you sure not over there? It's here? It's right there. Right there. Problem is, things are going to get hot quick. I know. Like really hot, really quick. Like that one's hot right there, baby. Yeah, that's fine. We'll back my truck up a little bit. Yep. Woo! Oh. Getting hot. Melt the paint off the truck. I don't know that we want to do too much of this. All right, I'm going to step away from this tractor for a minute. I am spraying uh, down nitrogen 32%. I think I've told everybody out here why I use 32% over 30% or 28% or 26%. Uh, that's because that is the highest concentration of nitrogen that you can get without them putting uh, that's the highest concentration of nitrogen you can get in liquid form um, the reason I do that use that is because when you add water to nitrogen uh, it becomes uh, it'll actually burn the grass more than if you don't now there's a a hydrogen release or whatever anyways I've explained this before so anyway I didn't have any 2,4-D in this tank mix because in this tank because I just didn't think that this farm needed it until I got over here and I see mustard I see garlic I see yeah mustard and garlic this is actually Timothy now uh, that's the type of grass it is or hay it is Timothy hay uh, and I want it to be clean, so I have to kind of wander around out here a little bit and uh, determine uh, Yeah, well, I've already determined that I need the that I need the uh, The 2,4-D in there to get those weeds under control. Timothy's supposed to be throwing it in the truck and bringing it over But there's all kinds of weird stuff this stuff here. No good So when he gets here, I'm gonna throw that in and go tacking Big, fat, stubby face chisel, and it'll pry it off. How is a stubby face chisel? Trust me. Just trust me. Anyway, rail one is in, kind of, sorta. Fits in there pretty damn nice. He's got it welded. See that? See that? We've got our holes drilled. He's Just tapping them bad boys. What's the matter? I can't get up there. Okay. Well, what do you got? Chisel? That's the one. That'll work perfectly, you know, Joe. Doesn't make any sense. Come on, Joe. Doesn't have to make sense. It's working. We are working. Okay. So I'm driving back from the mushroom barn, and uh, I get up behind this truck. I've got a car in between me, but I get up behind this truck, and I read the back of the truck, and I recognize the logo, and I'm like, wow, that's actually Champ's mushrooms. I'm going to turn it around here. I want to see if I can get up close enough. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I'm pretty sure if you're on full screen, you can see that or zoom it in. Alright, so that is Champs Mushrooms or Kale and Farms, the company that I bail straw for. That is their uh, mushroom snacks. Now, I have had these things. You can buy them on Amazon. They are good. They're really good. Um, making a movie now. Yeah, gotta make a movie. So, this movie is starring the Heston 4910. And what we're doing is we're replacing the side rails or the rails for the plunger to run back and forth on. Got the bottom ones in on both sides and now what we're doing is we're setting the upper one and we had a few issues with 
a couple of screw ups, but we've got them under control. But right now we've got Joe moving it very ever so slightly back and forth to see that the rollers are not hitting. Are they hitting anywhere? Huh? Hold it there. This roller is not touching at all now. Not even close. Which roller? This one. I can stick my fingers, my pinky in it. Well, you know what that means, don't you? It's bowed. It's bowed. So, what we'll do is, as long as it's, as long as it's uh, the right distance on both the front and the back, you can weld it. So you can either measure it to the right distance and weld it or tack it up and then when we go to uh, when we go to put these side things on we'll C clamp them and bring them to the right distance before we tack them up. And that should fix that. Somehow misplaced my coffee mug. My to go mug. So I gotta stand here and drink my coffee. When I was a kid my mom used to drive us to school. Uh, we didn't go to school very far away. It was, uh, oh, Christian school about two miles away. And uh, she used to hold that coffee mug. I wouldn't even dare do that now. I'd have it all over the cab. But that was a 1976 Jeep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1976 Jeep Wagoneer, uh, rough as hell, steel dash, vinyl seats. It didn't matter if you spilled anything. But we were never allowed to eat in that car ever. Within a couple of short years, that thing rusted out. And that was that. But I don't know. I never really thought much of it back then. But that was before to-go cups. Yeah. She used to do that. Anyway, I still does it. All right, so uh, this is the maiden voyage for the new. Uh... Why is this thing saying my door is open? There, because it was maiden voyage for the fertilizer spreader. It's in the back. Um, new frame on it. I don't know. We'll get you to see it in the mirror. I'm gonna go get 8,000 pounds of potash. Soil tests uh, tell me that I don't need phosphate, even though I put phosphate on with the spent compost. It's a different type of phosphate, it's not commercial phosphate. I bought potash. This is pink potash, it's 60% or 60 pounds per every 100 pounds of material is potash. The rest is just fluff, I guess. Uh, so, what I will be putting on is 100 and between 130 and 140 pounds per acre. The accuracy of this uh, spreader is yet to be determined, but that's what I need on the 60 acres of land that's here on the farm. Um, I put down somewhere around five tons of dry spent compost. Wet, it was something like 12 tons. So in dry tons of spent compost is five. Uh, to grow a crop of corn, probably only would have needed two to three so of dry. So, but I've got about five on the whole entire farm. So I'm going to add the potash because potash is not uh, is there isn't much potash in the spent compost. And as far as the nitrogen, that is a nitrogen that will last all summer long and into next year. So last year I put spent compost on this entire farm and this year I put a lot. So last year I put two and a half tons to the acre and of course there's only a percentage of that left, a small percentage, about a third of it left to feed the plant on top of the five. So <coughs> so anyway, that being said, we're going to put the potash down that I need for the corn and I'm going to be putting down nitrogen. I'll be using liquid nitrogen, but I'm not planting corn just yet. Not just yet, it is too cold. Right now it's like 48 degrees. It's effing cold, and I mean cold. Ridiculously cold for this time of year. Normally it would be, I'd be in a t-shirt right now and I'm putting a sweatshirt on in the afternoon, but that's not happening. So uh, I'm gonna set the computer up for Mr. Joe so that he can or the GPS up so that it's a 50-foot spread pattern 
And these guys are doing the finishing touches. I know how much of an asshole that thing was before. Uh, has nothing to do hey, with what? it. You don't know how spoiled you are until you get into a two-wheel drive uh, 4450 across this rough-ass ground. Anyway, I just wanted to take a walk out here. That spreader was just recently rebuilt. Uh, my nephew did the lion's share of the work, Cody. And I uh, just wanted to uh, show you the spread pattern here. It is looking good. I mean, what you do is you go go in where the tracks are and you can see how close it is together not so much in the dirtier area of it or dirtier but uh, the more uh, organic matter area of it um, I, I think it's done a wonderful job the spread pattern is perfect my GPS for some reason is not working so I kicked out the kid that I was gonna put in it because we need to do a little bit of old school here eyesight and experience will do this for you and uh, yeah so here's the center of the spreader there's the other center over here so you want to get over here to the center of your two rows between the two and take a look to make sure that the uh, pattern is solid all the way across this ground is extraordinarily cold by the way and we're expecting more rain so we won't be planting corn anytime soon but you can see that I have fertilizer here, very nicely, uh, very nicely uh, spread, very nice spread pattern. So I'm happy with that. The whole total rebuild on that thing cost about uh, just under five thousand dollars. Right, well, it seems to be working quite flawless. You're probably not even going to be able to hear what I'm saying because these old 4450s, the cab interior of this thing is out. I need to get. I need to redo the interior of it. It's just a disaster, you know. Everything, headliner, everything. But anyway, oh yeah, the spreader is working just fine, and it seems to be putting down the proper amount. It looks like I'm going to get the 60 acres done uh, with possibly a slight little bit left over. Uh, but I do have a spot that I know is pretty pathetic. And I'm going to use it there if I have any left over. We'll see. Um, we'll see. I'm going to be growing sweet corn. And uh, if you want sweet corn, you have to have a good, uh, a good fertilizer program to get a little extra. Anyway, there you go. And my uh, GPS is not working. I think my antenna is bad. I have to get a new one. MS Shane42 and a bunch of other people have asked if I have gotten the Wuhan virus. Wuhan Will may have, but not me. No, he's just down there unhappy because it's nap time. No, I am, I've just been extraordinarily busy. That's all. And if you just watched this video, you would know that. Absolutely 100% nuts with work. Eric Reich, looks like you're up a thousand subscribers and have like seven ads in your videos. Well, that's YouTube for you. I changed the channel name and bam, Ad City. I guess they want me to make some money now. Ray Perkins says, alcoholism is a failure to resist a weakness, period. 100% right that it is not a disease, it is the failure to resist a weakness. That's Pruitt's Homestead, thanks for putting the dollars to farming. It costs a bunch of money to grow anything. Well, actually, I really didn't do a dollar to dollar comparison uh, of what it costs. I know that if you shop around, you can get your inputs much cheaper. Uh, like me, I just bought uh, Golden Harvest seed corn at $158 a bag, and uh, the local wanted 200 and uh, well, I don't even want to say, because it was just downright embarrassing. Anyway, I bought more of the Golden Harvest instead because it's over a hundred. It's over a hundred dollars cheaper. Barlow Farms, you cost into your hand, Mr. Biden. Love your vids. Keep up the great work. Now, Paul, do you have plans for a new skid steer if the economy gets turned around? That's what Fred Yupa says. Well, yes, I'm going to fix my skid steer and probably trade it in on. I'd hate to say it, but a Kubota. I don't really want to buy a Kubota. But either that or a Takuchi or Takauchi, those things are bulletproof, so that's the plans. Um, Lee Steele says that uh, China should pay. I agree. 
China created this. China let it loose. China needs to pay for it. Hank Jensen, how come your shop is such a dump? You must lose things on a regular basis. A clean shop is a safe shop. Well, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Show me your shop if you even own a shop, you know. And if you do, I, I'd like to see the work that gets produced there. And, uh, yeah, uh, we do what we do. Sometimes we lose stuff, but most of the times we find it. There you go. A clean shop is an unemployed shop. I could agree to that, crime vid. The, uh, the funny thing about these shops where you can eat off the floor, doesn't look like much work has been done there. Most people uh, pull their equipment into shops like that. There's a toolbox in the corner, but the dealership usually comes out and does the work. They only know how to change oil and maybe fix a light bulb in most cases that I've seen. Come to my shop, I'll show you how to get shit done. Gary Roach, you bought a remade V10 Ford motor, and it was junk when they first came out. And betting it won't be much better now. Well, unfortunately for your lack of intelligence, Gary Roach, um, they haven't made the V10 now for several years. They discontinued it, and it was an okay motor. There was nothing wrong with it. People that had them loved them. They were actually more fuel efficient than I expected them to be, but they went to the 6.2 liter V8, which you know, was in its own right uh, an engine that was okay, but not great from what I understand. Uh, it was great for what it was initially made for, which was the SVT uh, Ford Raptor pickup truck. And then they put them in the heavy duty trucks. And to me, uh, a Raptor engine was meant for the Raptor, nothing more. Uh, but this engine that I bought, the 7.3 liter, that's a truck engine. And if you don't know anything about it, which it's quite obvious that you don't, you should probably educate yourself. You might be surprised. Anyways, this is the last one for today. Enjoy that, and I'll see you when I get a chance to do it. Another video, because you know what? We don't know. We're busy. We're really, really busy. Thanks for being here, though. Oh, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. That's your rating. So if you hit the thumbs up, it it lets people know that this channel is actually out here and people enjoy watching it. If you don't enjoy it, hit the thumbs down. That's okay because that lets people know that you are actually an asshole and you stuck to the end just to give me that thumbs down.